Hi everyone, welcome to my shed and uh, welcome to this first word on Wednesday. You know, we've been thinking recently about how we devote ourselves to the Apostle teaching. How do we devote ourselves to this this book and the teaching within it? And uh, we were thinking we needed to just reorganise ourselves in such a way that we can um, take the pressure off Sundays a little bit. But also uh, we want to encourage and facilitate and help you devote yourself to the word as much as possible and as best as we can. So we're going to have these uh, sessions each week for the next few weeks. We're going to see how it goes. There'll be a teaching that we're going to release, sort of uh, put online at about 7 p.m. on a Wednesday evening, and then there'll be a discussion afterwards. But the hope is that you can use these for your personal study. Uh, if you can't do the group study, uh, or if you'd prefer to look at them with a group, there's going to be different opportunities and, and, and for you to do that. So um, after the session this evening uh, on Zoom, we're going to be having a discussion. There's going to be a few questions that we can look at in the light of what I've shared today, and that will be the case each week. But Wednesday evening may not suit you. You might want to gather a few people to look at it together or study together at a different point in the week. And, and the hope is that you would do that also. But the, the main aim is that we use these to help us personally and corporately as a church devote ourselves to the teaching uh, of the Bible and uh, really get, get stuck into that. So uh, what I want to do this evening on this first one is uh, introduce the, the series that we're looking at at the moment. It's called The Prayers of the Apostles and uh, what it says on the front page here is that these apostolic prayers will, as we meditate upon them, help us as we continue to think about our personal response to Christ and what it means to both be both a gathered and a scattered community. We will also see the Arise foundational principles, ambitious for the kingdom, restored identity, inside out living servants of all and empowered by the spirit that we're seeking to introduce as a church and live by day by day, embodied within each of these prayers. Um, and I want to just introduce that series this evening um, as we as we gather together can i encourage you as you look through these prayers to use them use them as you pray and we've had some a couple of mornings where we've been praying over the city and i've you know, already found them really really helpful as we prayed over the city and uh, i'd encourage you to, to as you meditate if you're going through them, as you meditate and think about them, how do you use them to help you as you pray so what is an apostolic prayer well i guess simply or most simply put an apostolic prayer is a prayer prayed by an apostle. Starting today uh, with our, our chief apostle, Jesus himself, we're going to read the Lord's Prayer together. This amazing apostolic prayer of all apostolic prayers. And then we're going to go on and look to some of the prayers prayed by the apostles such as Paul and Peter and John. You know, those recognised uh, as apostles within the New Testament. But the, the, the apostolic calling, I believe, is not limited to just a few. I believe the apostolic calling continues today. Paul says in Ephesians 4, when he's talking about the distribution of gifts that Christ gives, he says this, so Christ himself gave the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers and evangelists. And the reason he gave them is to equip the, um, his people for works of service so the body may be built up so it's still a, a gift that needs to be embraced and acknowledged and honored today um, I think it's fair to say that the, the whole concept of the apostolic has had and, and I reckon at the moment is having a bit of a, a bit of a pounding um, so-called apostles in the past have kind of lorded it over the church, sometimes just wreaking havoc. And uh, it, it's caused people to feel a bit twitchy about using or considering the, the, the concept of the apostolic. More recently, and this is a little bit more in America than it is in here, but it is creeping in here. It is uh, impacting some people uh, in this country. Um, but one part of the church has been kind of accusing the other part of the church of establishing what's called super apostles. Now, this is my view. 
And my view is this, is that the enemy is using this to, dis, to, to diminish this aspect of God's gifting and calling upon men and women of God. I think um, this calling is vital uh, for the kingdom of God. And my view is that there are, there are different elements and aspects we've kind of seen already of this apostolic calling. So we've got the apostles from the New Testament. You know, those, those who kind of, I think, witnessed or saw Jesus. And then you've got um, apostolic calling. I think there are people who do have apostolic calling within the church. It, it could be for a specific area. It could be uh, for a specific region. Uh, or it could be that, that God occasionally raises people up that ha has a word for the church globally. And... Um, you know, of, of, often it, it, it's shared and it's given and it's received in what they call a non-governmental way. You know, so you just want to listen to what the person is saying and say, OK, is this a principle for me, for, for my church, for my region in this time? So um, I think there are people who are raised up for um, in this sort of apostolic mindset for regions, uh, for towns. Uh, but then. I believe also that, that we all have an apostolic calling. And when you look at the, the meaning of the word apostolic, you'll see why, um, why this, is, this is so. So let me just unpack that a little bit for you. Um, my understanding is that the, 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 the whole concept of apostolic is a Roman one. And what would happen is, is that the, the, the Romans would, would go and they would... Um, conquer the world you know and they go and conquer a place and what they would want to do there is establish Roman rule in this place so they'd go they'd capture it they'd conquer it but then what they would do is send somebody from Rome to that place the apostle and the job of the apostle was to, to, to establish Roman rule in that place and that was the, 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 the responsibility so they would kind of organize things and structure things so that, 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 that Roman rule would be established in that place. Hence that, that kind of sort of concept of, you know, the, the apostle being the, the sent one. Now, how do we apply that then to sort of the kingdom of God? Well, I believe we're all sent and, 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 and the rule and reign of God is what, um, the, 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 you know, what our calling is as apostles, as sent ones. We go to the place where God has called us, the place that God has placed us. Um, and and our, the call of God, this apostolic call, is to seek to bring, to seek to establish something of his rule and reign in that place. Jesus, you know, embodies this calling, doesn't he? Just so perfectly. He's the ultimate sent one. And in his sentness, he gives us this amazing prayer with which we pray. And I, I just want to read it to you now. It's the reading that uh, is listed in the, the, the prayers of the apostles for today. And um, you find it in Matthew. Matthew 6. This is what is said. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. I think the, the line in that that really strikes me as being kind of so clearly apostolic in terms of, you know, establishing that kingdom rule and reign here on earth is the line that says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as you know, we've been talking about what this means for us for a long, long time now. I like the way Paul in Ephesians kind of 
says this in a slightly different way. Um, it says there in Ephesians 1 and verse 22, it says, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. I love the way that Paul kind of reframes that. You know, he wants to fill everything in every way. Every situation, we can pray that prayer. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Paul says we want, you know, Christ desires that all things everywhere would be filled with himself. Now, Angela um, preached, uh, I think it was last year, I've got the date here, 26th of May, on praying the Lord's Prayer. I want to encourage you, if, if you've got the time, would like to go back and do the listen again there, because there's some really helpful hints about how you pray the Lord's Prayer. But I want us today really just to focus on that line. Um, Let your, king, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I want to, to, to encourage us, as we think about that, to, 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 say, to ask that important question in, in all theology, and that is, you know, so what? So what does this mean to me? And I want us to ask, answer or seek to answer that question, not just for us as a church, but for us individually, in, in terms of trying to um, establish or shape some kind of vision, <laughs> some kind of vision for our life that comes out of that prayer so that we can actually say, you know, this is what we believe it, 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 it looks like for the kingdom to come. Uh, on earth as it is in heaven in any given situation that we might be facing it uh, you know it might be um in our minds it might be in our hearts it might be in our homes in our workplaces in our streets in our city in our nation so we start asking the question what is my vision what does the vision shaped by the coming of the kingdom look like because i believe that's an apostolic kingdom and what we do is we start, as we start establishing that vision, as we start walking in that vision, we start praying that vision in. It shapes the way we pray. That's why we've got these prayers of the apostles, because these prayers are shaped by a kingdom apostolic vision. So I want us to think about that. What is our vision? What is our kingdom vision? Because when we start to, to have that kingdom vision, it starts to shape and change all our lives, not just the way we pray, but the way we act, the way we walk, the way we love, the way we connect with people, the way we are with our neighbours, the way, you know, it, it changes absolutely everything. And I think this is something that, you know, yeah, we want to do this as a church, but at the same time, it's got to be more than that. You know, this has got to be about us as individuals. You know, corporately, collectively, yes, we are the body of Christ, but actually we have got to work out what our kingdom vision is for us individually wherever we find ourselves wherever we are placed whatever situation or circumstance however easy or however hard that may be we've got to ask this question what is our kingdom vision and then we just need to say lord let it shape my hopes my dreams my aspirations what does it mean in those things for for, for the kingdom to come and to shape them. What does it mean in, 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 in each of those things for Christ to fill all things everywhere, for his influence, his lordship, his rule and his reign to be evident and present? So I want, I want, one of the things I want to come out of this word on Wednesday this week is, is a vision and, and for us to start thinking about what our kingdom vision is if we haven't already um then then maybe for the first time you may have been doing this for many many years um if so then fantastic um and maybe just a brief re reminder that this is this is so you may have forgotten the vision that god has given you in the past so what is your vision now, i want to say something coming out of that question that i think is really important i was away praying last week 
And this is the thing that the Lord really sort of impressed upon me as I was thinking and praying, not about this, but it just is so relevant and so pertinent to it. And that is this, is this that there is a battle raging for that vision. You know, if we as a church or you as an individual are going to be ambitious for the kingdom of God in your life, in our life together for our, for our community and our region, then inevitably there is going to be a battle raging for that vision. And I want to actually just think about an incident, a moment in Jesus's life when we see the battle raging for that vision so clearly and so acutely. And what he did in this situation is he resisted the, the testing and the temptation but he kept his mind fixed on that which God had given him to do. He kept his mind fixed on the vision, the vision that, of, of what God had for him. So um, if you want to turn to it, it's um, Luke 4 and it's Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. You know, this follows his baptism. And then we read in Luke 4, um, just the, the first few verses, they're down to 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted, he was tested by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up uh, on a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And, and he said to them, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give them to you if I want to. Sorry, I can give them anyone I want to anyone I want to. If you worship me, all will be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said, Jesus answered, it is said, do not put your, the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. I mean, there's lots in there that we could look at today. But to finish, I really wanted us just to think about um, kind of how Jesus resisted the temptation to take his eye off the ball, to focus on a different vision, to lose sight of that which God had in his baptism. Um, kind of, he was affirmed, he was equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit and he was sent out. It talks about this being the beginning of his ministry. He was just setting out with this vision before him and yet this temptation comes and it's a, it's a seeking to take his eye off the vision. So Jesus has been affirmed in his identity. He's been equipped by the power of the Holy Spirit to um, kind of fulfill that which God has given him to do. And then it says in verse, um, I can't remember where it is now, the verse it says, and he, um, and he was, and he, and he, it was at the, sorry, verse 23, it says there he was, at, it was at the beginning of his ministry and he sets out with this vision before him straight away he's tested as, as, as has been said and, I, and just just three things that I want to highlight about this testing as we seek to keep our eye on the ball we keep to seek our eye on the vision that is before us the first element of the testing that I want to on a highlight and, 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 the, and the first thing I want to say is that you know the enemy wants us to focus on ourselves he says to Jesus just I want you to focus on your hunger here and the enemy wants us to focus on ourselves he wants us to focus on our own need our own needs above everything else we talked about this recently a little bit didn't we he said actually when we start making idols of ourselves then we can lose sight of that which God has for us so that's the first tactic of the enemy to to, to, to derail Jesus from this vision he wants to him to focus upon himself 
The second was, is the enemy wants us to, to walk in the world's understanding of power and authority, either lording it over um, or manipulating or cajoling people or being crushed by others who are doing that to us. That's not what God wants for us. When we start doing that, it will take our minds away from it, will distract and derail us from the vision that he's given us, this kingdom vision. What God wants us to do, he wants us to understand the power and authority of the kingdom that is ours. This is displayed and rooted in Christ and his cross. It is exercised in the power of the Holy Spirit, but it is different to the world's understanding of authority and power. And I believe God wants us to start walking in, understanding, growing in and experiencing um, what that, 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 the, the power and authority of the kingdom displayed through his servants walking humbly with him. So the enemy wanted him to walk in a different power, to strive for a different power. He wanted him to kind of just almost elevate himself and uh, as, as a way of taking his eye off the, off, off the ball, off the vision that, that God wanted him to walk in. So the, the final, I think, strategy that the enemy used to try and derail Jesus from the vision that he had before him was the, the, the enemy would have him, would have us kind of test God rather than trusting, believing, receiving our inheritance as children of God. He wants us to be comfortable and secure in who we are in Christ our restored identity, sons and daughters of the living God. And this is not something that we have to, to test, or we have to strive for. It is the gift of God, witnessed and testified to our spirits by the Holy Spirit. So each of these things the devil tries to use to distract and derail Jesus from the, um, the vision that is before him, the pathway he was on. And I believe the enemy still uses these strategies and techniques as, for us as a church, but also more so, I think, as us as individuals to try and derail and distract us from the kingdom vision that we as an apostolic people should have. And we need to be mindful of this. We need to recognise it when it comes. You know, we need to, 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 to be kind of seeking to sort of kind of flee from these temptations when they come along. And we need to strive to keep that kingdom vision before us. So summing up, as I draw to a close, what is your kingdom vision? Have you thought about it? What is your vision for your for your for your mind, your heart, your home, your your street, your neighbours? What is your vision? For your village, your town, your, our city, what is your vision? What is the kingdom vision? What does it look like when we pray and when we see your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Because that is an apostolic vision. And we will we, we'll see it as we go through these different prayers, the prayers of the apostles. And I pray that these really do shape the way we view things and we pray for things and what we pray for. I do pray that that will help us as we do that. And, and, um, and, and that is my real hope for this series, that it will do that. It will shape, inspire, envision, help us see what we believe um, we can see and will see as the kingdom comes. And as we pray and as we kind of develop this vision, it's about then saying, Lord, OK, what is my part? What is my place in the answering of this prayer, in the fulfilling of this vision? What are you saying to me? about that okay i i hope you found that helpful um we've put together some discussion questions for you to look at and to consider uh together or individually about how you go forward with this kind of this 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 kingdom vision that god is calling us to this apostolic vision to see the kingdom come and 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 to see lives and homes and communities transformed and changed by the coming of the kingdom of god Thanks very much. Bless you all. Bye now.